April National Stress Awareness Month. It's a month dedicated to raising awareness of the negative impact of stress. Lucky to have joining us this morning, Zach Goldman, a therapist with Thrive Works in West Hartford. Good morning, my friend. Good morning. Thank you for being here. Absolutely. I want to start big picture with you if we can, and maybe just why even have this conversation? Why raise awareness about, about stress? No, it's a great question. So stress can have long-term uh, if not addressed, impacts on both physical and mental health. So stress itself isn't actually a mental health diagnosis, but if over a long period of time it's not addressed, it can lead to mental health diagnoses like anxiety disorders, depressive disorders, eating disorders, and a variety of other things. On the physical health side, um, stress increases cortisol in your body, which is uh, like the fight or flight hormone. and Historically, it did that because it was adapted, because our stress was more acute. But today, since it's more long-standing, having the excess cortisol in your body for a long period of time can lead to a bunch of different physical health consequences. So I like to be proactive when we can. And understandably, I would guess different things work for different people. But right. for somebody who's watching at home this morning and is feeling entirely stressed out, what can he or she do? Yeah, it's a good question. You, you alluded to something that I was going to say in that Different things do work for different people. So I, I'm hesitant to say do this one thing because what could be really helpful for one person could actually be an increased stressor in itself for another person. So um, for myself, I can just give that example. Uh, meditating, journaling, connecting with friends and family are all great. Another one that's really common that's that's proven to be very effective also is exercise. But if drawing is helpful, do that. If singing is helpful, do that. Whatever works, go with it. If standing on your head is helpful, do that. Just don't do it for too long, but you can do it for a little bit. Um, but yeah, essentially just go with what works. Do you find that men and women handle stress differently? I mean, I, I think of my guy friends and some of them are just like, oh, I'm gonna power on through. Nothing's gonna mm. stop me. And, and I can see a negative impact to that. Yes, right, right. Um, I would say that they typically might have different go-tos in, in general. These are all kind of like generalizations. Each individual person might have a different uh, kind of response, but I typically think that men air more on the like the exercise side of things and women air more on the like social connectedness side of things. But again, different things work for different people. Go with what works. Folks who watch our morning show know that Rachel, Lauren, the whole gang, we all talk about our, our self-care journey and what we're doing for self-care. Sure. Uh, if that's kind of a new, relatively new term for folks, what do we mean by that and what can folks be thinking about on that front? Yes, absolutely. So self-care is recognizing when you're stress starts to be elevating and knowing to what to do in order to kind of cope with that and bring it back down. Typically, the way I think about stress is you can kind of think of a, a fraction where the numerator would be stressful things going on and the denominator would be your ability to cope with those things. And the smaller the fraction, the less stressed you're gonna be. There's two ways to smaller that fraction. It's either decrease the amount of stressful things or increase the amount of thing of uh, coping mechanisms that you can do to handle the stress better. Both of those work. Common mistakes that people make when it comes to talking about stress or, or dealing with it in our own lives? Yeah, good question. Common mistakes are thinking that stress is just a normal part of life. Stress to some extent, there are periods of time when people experience stress, but that's not an excuse to not do anything about it. Um, just because stress is kind of a common topic doesn't mean that it's something that we all just have to push through and live with. That is all really helpful information. I feel like we could have you on the couch all day long, uh, potentially taking appointments. A lot of workplaces offer assistance as well. Of course, you can talk to your own doctor. We appreciate your coming in. Absolutely. Thank right. you for having me.